This is the Distance and Midpoint tutorial. The first thing I'd like to talk to you about in this tutorial is the distance formula. The distance formula is provided by this equation here. d is equal to the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Now what that means is the x1 and y1 are referring to one coordinate point and the x2 and y2 are referring to a second coordinate point. The distance we're calculating is the distance between those two coordinate points. Let's jump into a typical distance problem. If you were given the line PQ and asked to calculate the distance, you'd use the formula on the right. We'd look at the coordinate points for both of those points first. So let's start with P. P occurs at point negative 8, positive 4. And I simply counted the units to the left from the origin and the units up to arrive at point P. And that was our x and y coordinates. Point Q occurs at positive 7 and negative 4. So we'll use the distance formula to calculate the distance between points P and Q. I'm going to use point P as our point 1 and point Q as our point 2 in the formula. So distance is equal to the square root of x1, so the coordinate from the first point, the x-coordinate, which is negative 8, minus the x-coordinate of the second point, which is 7, quantity squared, plus the y-coordinate of the first point, which is 4, minus the y-coordinate of the second point, which is negative 4, quantity squared. So now let's go ahead and simplify everything inside the parentheses. Negative 8 minus 7 is a negative 15 squared. Now we can simplify the right parenthesis, which was 4 minus a negative 4, which then minus a negative turns into a plus. So we have 4 plus 4, which is 8 squared. So now we'll just simplify that even further. The distance is equal to the square root of negative 15 squared, which is positive 225, plus 8 squared, which is 64. So the distance is equal to the sum of those two numbers. 225 and 64 makes 289. And 289 is a nice perfect square, so the square root of 289 is 17. So the distance between point Q and point P is 17 units. Now let's take a look at another distance problem that's reasonably common. Here we have a circle drawn in. And we want to calculate the distance from the center of that circle to the outside, or even the distance across, so the diameter. So let's go ahead and choose the diameter for this particular problem, and calculate it for the circle. In order to choose the diameter and find that distance, we need to draw it in so that we know what two points we're going to refer to. So the diameter is any line that crosses through the center of the circle and touches both sides of the circle. And our diameter in this case, we'll say begins at this point right here in blue and ends up at this point up top. So I'm going to call the lower point point L and the upper point point U. So we want to find the coordinates of each of those points to begin with. The coordinates of point L, if you look, are negative 1, negative 1. And the coordinates of point U are 6, comma 8. So now we can use the distance formula and calculate the distance between those. As we've seen the distance formula already, we're going to go a little faster this time. So point L will make our point 1, and point U will make our point 2. So distance is equal to the square root of the x-coordinate of point 1 
negative 1 minus the x coordinate of point 2, which is 6, quantity squared, plus the y coordinate of point 1, which is negative 1, minus the y coordinate of point 2, which is 8, quantity squared. So we'll simplify what's inside the parentheses. Negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7 squared plus negative 1 minus 8, which is negative 9 squared. Go ahead and square both those parentheses. So negative 7 is 49 and negative 9 squared is 81. Now we can add those two values together and we'll get the square root of 130. Now you can't simplify that any further, so the distance across this circle in terms of the diameter is the square root of 130. That's the diameter of our circle. Now let's go ahead and talk about midpoint. We've already spoken a little bit about midpoint in our segment measurement tutorial, but we're going to go ahead and talk about it a little bit more right now. If, per se, we had a triangle drawn on this graph, and we wanted to know the midpoint of one of the sides, there's a couple ways we could calculate it. If the side were vertical or horizontal, we would just count the number of units that that side length was and divide it by two, and that would be the midpoint. However, when we have a side like the hypotenuse of this right triangle here that is not vertical or horizontal, we want to use the midpoint formula to calculate that. So what I'll do is pick two points for the hypotenuse of this triangle. I'm going to pick this point here where that segment begins and this point here where the segment ends. The upper point will just label point U and the lower point we'll label point L. So the coordinates of point U are 1, 9, and the coordinates of point L are 8, 2. So now we can use the midpoint formula here to solve for the midpoint of line segment UL. So midpoint is equal to the x-coordinate from point 1, and point 1 will make u. So the x-coordinate from point 1 is 1, plus the x-coordinate from point 2, which is point L. And that x-coordinate is 8, all divided by 2, comma, the y-coordinate from point 1, which is 9, plus the y-coordinate from point 2, which is 2, all over 2. Now, we just want to simplify what we have here. So the midpoint is equal to 1 plus 8, which is 9, over 2, comma 9 plus 2, which is 11, over 2. You can leave them in fractions just like they are, or you could rewrite them if you wanted to in decimal form. So 9 over 2 is 4.5, and 11 over 2 is 5.5. Use whichever one you're more comfortable with. And that's how you calculate the midpoint of a segment.